Yes, I think we are about to start. Ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Morten Lykkegaard. I'm a member of the European Parliament. Uh, I am the vice chair of the Culture Committee, among other things. And uh, it's a pleasure for me, uh, on behalf of the committee and on behalf of the, of the ELDE group and my colleague Olle Schmidt, uh, to welcome you all to this hearing on sport and democracy where we will, of course, deal with the question of the Ice Hockey World Cup of 2014, which, as you all know, has been given to Belarus. It is no secret to anyone that the Parliament has been quite clear in its criticism of giving the World Cup to Belarus. In March 2012, the Parliament adopted a resolution on this, and on top of that, the Committee of Culture and Education sent a letter to the International Ice Hockey Federation, asking the Federation to reconsider its decision. Uh, the Federation will have its annual Congress in the middle of May, as you probably know. We therefore think that, it's, that we have an excellent opportunity to pass on the message to them today. Before I hand over the, the microphone uh, to my colleague, Ole Schmidt, um, I would like to briefly introduce you to the uh, panel speakers, whom I thank warmly for showing up today uh, and uh, bringing their contribution to the discussion. Um, from Belarus, on this side, we have uh, Olga Stoshinska. I hope I pronounced your, your last name uh, somewhat correctly. Co-founder and director of the Democratic Belarus and also a member of the steering committee on the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum. Welcome to you. From Sweden, uh, on my left, to your right, uh, we are joined by Martin Ukle, chairman of Östgruppen, the Swedish Initiative for Democracy and Human Rights, with 20 years of experience in human rights issues and also a frequent participant in the debate on Belarus. And from the Parliament, on my right side, uh, we are joined by two of my colleagues, Peter Stasny from Slovakia, uh, and a member of the EPP group. Mr. Stasny actually supported Slovakia's membership uh, in the NATO and the EU. Uh, he has 20 years of experience as a professional ice hockey player and 50 years in the American Ice Hockey League, I dare mention, just for those who, uh, you who actually are interested in ice hockey, which I happen to be. And uh, of course, also the general manager of the Slovak national ice hockey team. So a very warm welcome to you also. And uh, last but not least, Marek Mikalski from Poland on my right side, um, and also from the EECR group, who has been a very active voice in the debates on having this uh, World Cup in Belarus. Mr. Mugaus is also a very active academic and part of the Parliament's delegation for relations with, with Belarus. So welcome to you also. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have any official representatives of the Ice Hockey Associations with us today, uh, but maybe their views will be presented by some of you. We don't know. We just have to wait and see. Uh, I will now hand over the word to my colleague, Ole Smith. Please, Ole. Thank you very much. If you have ever seen a hockey uh, game, you know that there is a lineup, and, and uh, this is a sort of lineup <laughs> from the beginning. Uh, I'm very happy that we actually can, can have this um, meeting again. Uh, as you know, some of us has we have been tried to be active in, in actually changing uh, uh, the Hockey Federation and their decision concerning Belarus 2014. The American Congress made several statements, this parliament, several statements as well, but no one, no one in the Hockey Federation has ever tried to listen, and I think it's a pity. I met uh, the Swedish uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Englund, several times He's a very nice guy. We both like hockey, but it's, it's, for me, it's unbelievable that they cannot change the, the hosting of this game. And, and there may be some discussion concerning if sanctions, if they are useful or not. Uh, but in this sense, I would say that uh, it could have a, 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 a positive effect. And if, and that is of course a key issue here, we shouldn't, we shouldn't mix uh, sports and politics. Of course, this can be said, but if Mr. Lukashenko, the president, is using it, is misusing exactly in that way, why can't we 
uh, uh, respond. Reciprocity is a common world. Uh, and I do think that uh, the Hockey Federation, uh, they have to, they have, they, they, they have to show some conscience. And, and, and I hope that they can actually change. Uh, we have at least uh, a, a year to go. And I, I, I would listen to the arguments why, uh, why we shouldn't uh, try to, to change uh, the hosting nation. Uh, there is an Eastern Partnership meeting in Vilnius in November. Uh, Lithuania is, as you know, at that time uh, the, the current president. And they are discussing to invite uh, Belarus as well. And there is a balance, of course, if um, they should be uh, invited or not, if we should have uh, the door at least semi-open or not. And that is, of course, an issue we can discuss. And I, I, I really uh, appreciate that, because that is, of course, uh, to be debated. It's, it's, it's not white or, or black in that sense. But a year ago, in March 2012, uh, two young ma men were executed, shot by the, 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 the Lukashenko uh, government. Uh, I, I think this, this, is, this is so shameful. This is so shameful, and and therefore, of course, we have to we have to see and look at what's going on, and and find appropriate measures to deal with this dictatorship. I would say that it is the last dictatorship in 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 Europe, actually, and is and my the final question is to all of you here, and and to the hockey federations and to the, those that support it that are going there. Is it the right signal to give to Lukashenko and to the Belarusian authorities that we will grant you this possibility to uh, actually host one of the most uh, popular games, sports events in the world? Is that appropriate? Uh, I would say no, and I hope that uh, conscious may, may bring uh, the Hockey Federation and their officials uh, to a, an, another statement and judgment in, in, uh, in May in Stockholm when they, ha when they have their Congress. Thank you for coming, and uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Olive, for this uh, intervention. Uh, now uh, I'm personally looking forward to the hearing, uh, hearing the panel's reaction to I guess basically two questions, key questions. Is sport and politics two sides of the same coin? Uh, you, you just mentioned it briefly, Ole. And this is, of course, an ongoing discussion. And the other one is, of course, is, uh, is the World Cup uh, going to take place in Belarus? So uh, the first uh, speaker will be Mrs. Toshinskaya. Uh, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. I first would like, of course, to thank the organizers because um, it's, it's very good that we keep discussing Belarus so that it doesn't disappear from political agenda. Um, I represent the Office for Democratic Belarus, which is based in Brussels. And uh, the main mission of our organization is to, uh, to create connections between the societies of the EU and the Belarusian society. We try to promote European <coughs> values in our country. We try to facilitate the adoption of European standards uh, through, through our different projects. And I'm, of course, speaking from a position of, of an NGO here. Uh, with regard to the championship, I don't have a formed opinion on this, I have to say, honestly. And the views uh, among society in Belarus are also divided, uh, whether this event should take place or not. And uh, the main issue is here, who will benefit uh, from, uh, from, from the championship. Uh, Belarus continuously has uh, very poor human rights records. We still have political prisoners remaining behind the bars, despite uh, all efforts by the international community to free them, and uh, demanding uh, their release and rehabilitation. Uh, it's clear that political contacts with the government of our country can be only re-established after all people are out of prisons. If we answer the question, who would benefit from the championship taking place? The government, of course, will use it for its own propaganda purposes. 
And uh, the question on the returns on the investments made of the in, uh, in the infrastructure, which was which is uh, established, and that's the question. I don't know if any of us can answer, frankly. I think uh, there is not much transparency in who is investing into this. But I can speak more on the level of society, and what is important. It is important to develop more people-to-people -people contacts. It's important to give opportunity for Belarusian citizens to learn more about the EU. And I will say why. Because the recent data provided, for example, by, by the Belarusian Institute for Strategic Studies and some researchers uh, based in Belarus, such as Satyo Center, show uh, in decrease in knowledge about the EU over the past years among population. For example, two years ago, about 21% knew about the Eastern Partnership. Now it decreased to 13. And similarly, on the European Dialogue for Modernization, it's only 4.6% who know about this process. Um, at the same time, about 87% of the population thinks that Russia is the most friendly country for Belarus, uh, with the United States having 42% uh, of uh, population thinking that's, that's the most, that's the enemy of, of our country. What is also clear that there is a lack of proper communication uh, by the European Union uh, about the EU, about the policies of the EU uh, towards the country. The population does not understand to the, to the large extent why the policy which is in place has been enacted. And many people, the overwhelming majority, thinks that the, the measures which are taken are taken because the government of Belarus pursues an independent policy, not because, uh, because of the human rights violations, rigged elections, and so on. Last week I was at the Globsec uh, conference in Bratislava and Commissioner Fule uh, spoke there on the Eastern Partnership and again underlined the importance of reaching out to the societies of our countries. Um, and many Belarusian activists now and among them three prominent politicians such as Alexander Milinkiewicz who is also the Sakharov Prize winner of 2005 or 6, if I'm not mistaken, um, and two others um, also issued recently <coughs> a statement uh, saying that we need more Europe in Belarus. Our society needs more Europe in Belarus. Uh, for some uh, other Eastern Partnership countries, this more European presence and more communication can be established through the association agreement or deep and comprehensive free trade agreements. In our case, we don't have these tools. Um, and what we can do is simply more direct communication with our society, with more opportunities for students, uh, for education, uh, common research projects, uh, business, expert community, you name it. There are basically very different groups in this society with whom uh, the EU is communicating to a certain extent, but the need is much greater. Our experts also say that more engagement could be done through culture, sports. I'm not sure if it goes for the hockey championship, but sports <coughs> in general. Uh, and, and the education. Going back to the championship, I think um, the campaign that was initiated against this event taking place in Minsk, there was one problem which was uh, voiced by our uh, experts in Belarus, that the messages of different groups outside, they were very different. Some demanded that, uh, some said that the championship can take place if political prisoners are released, some others have put forward other conditions. So in the end, there was no one single message. And I think the campaign could have been more successful if one message uh, would, be, would have been created. Um, as for, uh, for now, I think it's, the decision is, is made, and this event will take place for Bel in Belarus. Uh, but what we, we all can do is use this event for, for a campaign 
for an international campaign to again raise the issue of Belarus internationally, to again speak about the problem of political prisoners and the shortages in uh, human rights. And it can be used also inside the country. Mm, messages can be forward by, forward by, forwarded by those guests who will be attending the country. And uh, there was a similar precedent with Azerbaijan and the Eurovision uh, Song Contest where the campaign Sing for Democracy was launched. Um, it's an opportunity to speak again about the visa question. It's an opportunity to raise the question with the government of Belarus why it is not participating in, um, in discussing the visa facilitation and readmission agreements with the EU while the invitation has been issued uh, about a year and a half ago. But also the visa question on the side of the EU and if, uh, if some unilateral steps can be made because Belarusians until now pay 60 euros per visa. And yes, it's true that many visas are being issued, but it's still, it still remains available to a very limited number of people in the country. So basically my main message here, as I said, I, uh, I don't have an opinion on championship. I know nothing about hockey, I have to admit. And, but my message here is that whatever decision in focus should be the society of Belarus, not Lukashenko and not the government, but the society and the needs of society. And the society of Belarus is craving for closer relations with the EU, for reforms and for transformations in the country. And I think it's not very uh, fair, uh, in a way, to call Belarus the last, uh, uh, the, the, the black spot on the map of Europe, because it's a highly educated uh, society, ranking, for example, 50 on the Human uh, Development Index by UNDP, 50 out of 186, which already shows something. It's historically a part of Europe, and we simply need the assistance of EU in first place, but also the larger international community to, to transform this country. So I'll stop here and I will, of course, look forward to, uh, to, to our discussion. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tosinskaya, uh, for this presentation. Uh, and I guess you already uh, pointed out several issues that can be debated, and, um, and I thank you for that. Uh, I guess it would be the most appropriate thing now to, to actually talk to someone who has uh, a stand on ice hockey also and some, uh, some, <laughs> some experience with it. So I will give, I'll pass on the word before asking questions because I, I urge you all to, to come up with questions and so that we can have a debate, as much debate as possible actually. But I guess we will just have uh, the interventions before, uh, otherwise we, we can, uh, some of the speakers will, will uh, maybe not get a chance. So. Uh, Next speaker I will introduce is uh, Peter Stasny. Please. Thank you very much. And uh, again, I appreciate, congratulate the organizer, Oli and uh, Mr. Lokegaard, for organizing this because I, I think it's always helpful. And at the end, uh, hopefully, we'll have a positive impact, even uh, you know, for, for Belarus and other countries that somehow. The, the sports can influence positive way because sports doesn't know any better. Only positively can influence. Problem is that some negative individual or regimes or country try to use that positive image of sport and try to kind of uh, forward to the to the public uh, around the globe that they are just kind of a normal. Everything is. Uh, uh, as it's supposed to be, and uh, leave us alone. Uh, and I guess uh, there is a reason why it's not only Oli's uh, uh, idea or, or conclusion that this is uh, last dictatorship in Europe. It is. That's a fact, because uh, as far as I know, almost every high politically uh, nominated person in European Union and, and, and the United States and every democratic country are actually using it and they're using it because it's a fact. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be. And then to uh, Madame Stuzinskaya, as she said, she knows just about nothing about hockey. I can just say I know just about everything about hockey <laughs> because I wasn't involved only 15 years and 10 years. I think I'm involved since about 
since I was born, and, and internationally for at least 40 years, mm -hmm. and just uh, about every level, as it was mentioned here, and uh, so I experienced, and I got a lot of first uh, uh, because I play for three countries, and I got a lot of medals and titles and uh, and uh, accolades. But I, I really know I served as a player, as a, as a top management in the in the best league in the world, and I serve as a, as a general manager of the gold winning team of my country, which we extremely proud of. But I also pay the price uh, to the people, just as Lukashenko and, and big Lukashenko supporters, because he's got many supporters in IIHF, and this is exactly what I want to take you through what happened, because I was very very much involved from the day one, when I was approached, after, after this uh, uh, unfortunate demonstration on, on, on December 19, uh, 2010, when, when really, really uh, Mr. Lukashenko showed his, uh, his real face. And uh, anybody who knows something about dictatorship has to do something. And, and it, this is my mission and I, I, I say it quite often, I, I repeat it, I come from the country when I was born, I live under dictatorship. I live in totalitarian regime, and I consider it my duty, uh, my responsibility, responsibility to act, to do whatever I can do in order to help the others. Because I remember we were waiting, we were hoping when I was young that somebody come and save us, help us and liberate us just as what happened in 1968 when the uh, Soviet-led uh, occupation by Warsaw Pact tanks and, and, and aircraft invaded Czechoslovakia, then my country, nobody came. But uh, you know, we were hoping, and, and, and it, it is our obligation, and I'm very happy that Europe is involved, all the leaders in Europe are involved in, in the case, and, uh, and as I mentioned before, now my sport, my beloved sport, ice hockey, is involved, and I don't take it lightly. And I have to underline here that we're not asking about boycott. We're asking about postponement or make some little change. And, and I, got, I got kind of uh, drawn in because I, I immediately saw the parallel. I saw the advantages because I know that, that Mr. Lukashenko is he's an avid hockey player. He's a crazy hockey player, which I like, <laughs> because everybody who is crazy about hockey, he's my friend. <laughs> and uh, and and no, he, no, Lukashenko is exception. There is always <laughs> exception to the rules. Uh, but uh, you know, seeing this and, and his immense power he has, you know, we all have a weak spot, soft spot. And we could use it, we really could use it, so maybe something can change, something can move uh, Belarus forward towards more democracy, more freedom, more liberty, less fear, less imprisonment, and kind of a, you know, improve, improve climate. Uh, that would be more than enough for, for all of us to back off and let the hockey show its positive way, because it, as I said, it doesn't know any, any other except positive, because sport, really joins and brings people together. There is no difference, no discrimination, no creed, no ethnicity, no color, no, no, no nothing, no status, no, no, no gender, no nothing. Uh, people just completely forget, and maybe that's the reason for Mr. Lukashenko. People, when they participate at the sport, completely forget their, their daily chores, daily difficulties, challenges, problems, and they just get kind of on the swing, on the roller coaster of of either positive emotions or negative, sad, or, or happy, or even sometimes euphoria. And that's the magic of a sport. And that brings people together. And, and at the end, you win, you're happy, you lose, you keep your hope. Next time, next time we will get you. And, and people chat and discuss after the games. And it doesn't matter if they're opposition and, and coalition uh, and, and whoever can they are. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the good quality that I, I, I really feel in this case they'll try to, 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 to misuse or abuse uh, in order to, to promote that Belarus is a quiet, normal society, regime is okay. It is not okay. Everybody knows it. And I was screaming, yelling everywhere I could. I work very closely uh, with the Senator Durban from United States uh, Senate. 
and, and he was very instrumental actually uh, in writing the law that was later signed by president and, and you know, because it was signed by president and passed both chambers, it became the law. It clearly calls uh, for postponement of, of the World Championship. Same thing happened in this parliament, actually in the US Senate, it was unanimous. So you have there, you know, 100 senators representing uh, you know, 300 plus million people. Here in, in our parliament, very similar resolution, you know, passed almost unanimously because I, I'm, I'm lucky, I see that I see the top row, so I can really see the parliament. It, it was a roll call, but there might be two, three hands up uh, uh, against at, 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 the, at the you know left side, at extreme left communists, some people probably disagree. But out of 750, if you have a few single hands uh, against, you can almost call it unanimous or, 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 or almost unanimous. And that's immense power. You got close to one billion people. I know the similar resolution passed in Canadian Parliament. And there were some other countries. So how can you, I mean, at least you need to consider it. You need to do something. And, and you cannot just ignore these leaders because the, the politicians are not the people who, or who get into some kind of high level of risk. They like to stay in comfort zone. They like to be likable. I don't like those features, but it's unfortunate. And in this case, they know they, they're doing the right thing. And that's why they voted unanimously in the US. That's why they you know, raised the hand here in European Parliament almost unanimously. And, and, and uh, if this is happening, how can such a strong message, powerful message of democratic world where ice hockey actually is, uh, is a sport where maybe 90, 90 plus percent of the team comes from either European Union, Europe, or, or, or North America. And now, now we have the leaders and, and, and ice hockey is equally represented. You've got, I don't know, 200 plus countries in the world uh, Ice Hockey Federation is something like 70, 72, somewhere there, maybe close to 80 countries. Uh, because it's a unique sport, it requires the, the, the ice surface, either natural or artificial, but it requires, so it cannot be practiced and, and being developed at this stage in every country around the world. Maybe in the future it might be, because you know, we all like uh, freezers and, 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 and refrigerators, you know, and we can easily build. And, and, and as we progress along, even cheaper, you can build the, the ice rink so anybody can skate and eventually uh, practice ice hockey too. So as, as you know, th this is moving forward. I got involved, I was asked, I was involved because of Lukashenko passion about the sport, about this clear message and, and the belief that something can be changed, something positive in Belarus. Well, even more politics at the place where I didn't expect it. And this is exactly, it's the IIHF, International Ice Hockey Federation, and mostly its chairman, uh, Mr. René Fazel. I actually passed message uh, myself, brought him, brought him, uh, I do have it here, the open letter we wrote, one we sent uh, with, uh, with uh, Dick Durban and, and Mike Kingley, who, is, uh, who represented the, the, the Congress, and uh, Dick Durban represented the U.S. Senate. I was the third one who signed it. We sent it to him on uh, April 11. And then uh, this is uh, 3rd of May. That was a message I brought, I brought personally to Mr. René Fazel because championship just happened to be my hometown, Bratislava, in 2011. And I met him in the hotel. I called him. We are friends, or we know each other, and you can even say friends because we go you know, a few decades back. Actually, I didn't know him, but he was also a referee, which I don't know if it's positive or not. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, but now, at least two decades, he is, he is a chairman and president of Isaacy Federation, and I've been involved in many, many ways over the many years, so we know each other very well. So we met in the hotel, we talked, and the uh, result was 
that he wouldn't put it even through the vote. He wouldn't even put it on the agenda. That's what bothered me. So we learn, we learn. <coughs> Following year 2012, we have a championship in, in Finland and Sweden, but main, uh, main organizer was Finland, so Congress happens to be, happened to be in Helsinki. So we manage, you know, so to do everything possible and learn from the past mistakes to make sure he doesn't really, uh, you know, kind of deviate and, and, and get easy way out. This time they put it on the agenda. But there is a power of chairman. He puts it on the agenda and he's, you know, when, when the point comes, yes, yeah, simple question. Is anybody have something? If not, we go further and he goes to the next point. I mean, not even putting into the vote. And that's, that's to me, it's insulting. It's intentional kind of abuse of his role because he cannot say he doesn't know. I told him, we wrote in the letter. He got many letters, as I said, uh, you know, one from parliament, one from uh, uh, US Congress and me and, and the US Senate. Uh, he knows the, the, the basic reason why there is that demand, why they need to act. And he doesn't put it even through the vote. You know, that, that tells me that there is something more sinister. It, I, I know in ice hockey, uh, Soviet Union used to be very influential. Now Russia is still very influential and Russia will always stick, you know, for Belarus. And, and there is always this, 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 this uh, currents and, and, and positioning and, 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 you know, for a power for position. And there is a lot of fear, even among the, among the members, because members of, of uh, IHF are basically presidents of their country ice hockey federations. They alone. But the group there who controls it, and, and you know, they use mostly in, in the council, which is kind of a narrower uh, management or, or, or a leadership of, of IHF, somehow, you know, with the influence, they again, they, they manage to avoid it. And what bothers me, about three months later, three months later, I came to the conclusion that it was intentional because I had another open letter written to René Fazel, written to the delegates. Uh, it was a follow-up on something that I communicate with the, with the IHF and René Fazel about the gentleman who used to be Slovakia Ice Hockey Federation president. He is a crook. He is a, he is a former KGB high-level officer. He is a communist spy, high-level spy, second highest spy ranked in Washington, D.C. during the 80s, during the Cold War. That person was involved in the fraud where hundreds of thousands of Czechs and Slovak lost tens of billions. Yet he is untouchable because you know, he is part of that clique, of that, of that, uh, that group that somehow is in the shadow, but they kind of influence all the activities in my country. <coughs> and they, he managed to get his, his foothold into IHF because as a president of the my federation, he, he got there, yet he got elected to the council. I warned them, yeah, he got elected to the council. Then uh, you know, actually he stepped down uh, last year Yet as, as he stepped down, I, by accident, I was going through IHF website. That gentleman was actually nominated to be a, listen to this really well. As I said, he defrauded uh, hundreds of thousands of people through kind of a, it was a scheme. I call it, he is a Slovak Bernard Madoff with a difference. And I actually wrote it to Drane Fazel, to the delegates, with the difference that Bernard Madoff, within a within very short period of time, year and something, received 150 years in prison. This guy, Juraj Shiroki, is moving freely. He's very influential. And he was, he was suggested and later nominated, despite my warning, to be a financial auditor of IIHF. I mean, if there is any insult uh, you know, bigger than this, please show me. Uh, and, yeah, because it goes, it's, it goes deep into my heart. It goes against my belief, my passion, my love for the sport. We cannot, we need to avoid these type of people to be involved in the sport. And, and it proved that René Fazel and whole IHF is somehow you know, easily being manipulated. And that's one of the reasons why 
somehow they avoided the, this Belarus and they said, oh, we don't want to mix sport with the uh, sport with the politics. Well, sport is a politics and IHF is a politics. And if uh, I don't want it involved in any extremes, I was part of the Olympics that were supposed to be boycotted. Luckily, I survived. Next one, three months later, were boycotted. And then revenge, that was, that was uh, Moscow 1980. And four years later, then East Block boycott, boycotted LA Olympics in 1984. And, and boycott should be only extreme, extreme case. It's like declaring the war. You have to, if you have no more options, then declare boycott. Uh, but again, I underline, we're not supporting boycotting. We supported postponement or at least uh, kind of get Mr. Lukashenko because he's so powerful. He can, he can, you know, w with one declaration written on oral, he can change the thing towards the better for Belarus, and that would be more than enough because sports as we know it, uh, and awarding the events such as Olympics, such as World Championship, it always goes for the merits. It goes to the country. Remember when South Korea moved up in 1980, got the Olympics. Then they got, they got Beijing and other countries. You, you reward good behavior, you, beha you, you, you uh, reward progress and, 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 and moving forward. So, so people benefit, sports benefit, that's the best combination. And in this case, I'm afraid if this world championship will happen, it will not benefit nobody but you know, evil regime, dictatorship of Mr. Lukashenko, that I, I really believe we need to do whatever is possible to avoid it or make him move, do something that will be enough. China is a communist country, but China proved to the world they're ready to open up, they're ready to, to, to loosen up. They, they started to practice capitalism. They, their, their citizens benefited mightily. You know, they used to be one of the poorest country in the world. Now it's becoming, it's in the middle somewhere or, or higher and it's growing. So I had no problem, even though China is far from per perfect, like we all are. I had no problem to support because I was asked also for boycott of Chinese Olympic Games. But sometimes you need to recognize, you know, that, that there is some effort, there is some movement, there is some progress being made. And by recognizing the progress, you can only, you can actually bring about more progress. And that's what we're all about. That's what I hope will happen in the case of Belarus. I will stop here and I'll be open for any question later on. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stasny, for this, uh, for this very useful and, uh, and clear message, I should say. Uh, now we really have something uh, to think about and I think we also got some very good insights uh, on what's happened so far in this organization, which we all talk about without knowing so much about it. Uh, I will, I had several questions for you, but again, I would, I think that we need to, to get our, our speakers uh, uh, up and running. So the next one will be Martin Nuklev, please. <coughs> thank you, I would also want to thank you for the invitation, the possibility to come here to discuss this very important issue. Um, I would like to start with the, the, the question that was posed uh, in this seminar, uh, are sports and politics um, two sides of, of one coin? And as for Belarus, I would rather say that they are on the same side of the coin, uh, the coin of oppression. And that's a coin that is being used as payment for keeping the regime in power. One side of the coin includes sport events, and it's all about creating legitimacy for the regime, producing a positive image of the regime. The other side of the coin is about silencing those who are opposing the regime by ways of violence, imprisonment, torture, and other violations of, of, of the human rights. So in my opinion, to, to, to hold the championships in Belarus, uh, by doing that, the International Hockey Federation raises the value of this coin of oppression. It helps the re regime continue behave the way they are right now. Um, 
I'd like to mention, as for the connection between politics and sports in, in Belarus, uh, I think it's quite natural for, for people living in Belarus, but maybe it's not that well known outside um, how deep this connection really is. There is uh, an organizing committee of the championships in place. It consists of, uh, well, it's, it's those people who are in charge of arranging the event, and it's led by the Prime Minister Mjesnikovic. Other members, central members of this organizing committee is the Minister of Information, Praliskovsky, in charge of the propaganda in Belarus. There is the Minister of Interior, uh, Igor Shunievich, who was one of those who led the interrogations of political prisoners after the uh, 19th of December events in 2010. There is the former first deputy head of KGB, Viktor Viejera, who was in charge of the process against Kanavalov and Kavalyov, those two young men who were executed. He was also in charge of the process against the, the prominent human rights defender, Alias Biliatsky. Those are the people who will be welcoming the international ice hockey community to Minsk to celebrate this championship together. Olga mentioned that one problem with the international campaign against the championships or for the removal of the championships was that it, well, it showed different demands and different positions, and I, I agree. Um, and I think actually it, it well, it is the Ice Hockey Federation who is, in, who is owning the, the issue, and it's, it's, perhaps it's not appropriate to demand from the Hockey Federation that they engage in politics, because it's not simply their role to, to, to be politicians. But it's fair to demand that they do live up to some fundamental moral values, uh, that they don't agree to actually to promote such an oppressive regime, to give those uh, awards to the regime. It's, it's not a problem for me that Lukashenko loves to play ice hockey. Um, and it shouldn't be a convincing argument for the Ice Hockey Federation either, because uh, why should they disregard a president that loves ice hockey? It's, it's quite, uh, of course, it, it, it's, it's just positive for them. But they should still have some fundamental principles, some limit for what, they, what could be considered acceptable. And that's actually interesting uh, as for the Swedish Hockey Federation. We brought up this issue with, with, uh, with the president of the federation. Uh, the thing is that uh, two or three years ago there was an incident within the Swedish national team. Uh, three players were uh, having contacts with uh, prostitutes in connection to, to uh, um, some, some game. And it was quite an uproar in the media about this and those players were suspended from playing in the national team for some months. Of course, the F Hockey Federation could have said that we don't want to mix up sports with other societal issues, but they did say that there are certain ethical values. And then our counter question to them right now is, well, if there are such principles, if there are uh, morals within the Hockey Federation, then you should use them definitely uh, when it comes to, to the championships in Belarus. So our main point from the human rights campaign for the removal of the championship is that by holding the, the championship in Belarus, um, the hockey community will give legitimacy to, the, to an oppressive regime. And that's simply not acceptable. And Lukashenko knows very well how to use, to use this event uh, it will, of course, be heavily exposed in, in state, strictly controlled state media. Um, hockey stars will be photographed together with, with Lukashenko. They will get medals from his hand, and it will all show a picture of uh, a very successful president. Um, as for the second question, uh, could it be bad or good for democracy? I don't think it could be good for democracy. Uh, perhaps we can minimize the bad effects if we 
well, if the championship will take place in Belarus and we do engage in a campaign, as, as Olga suggested, uh, to raise the human rights issues, to raise the problem, uh, problems of Belarus, to raise, to, to spread information about the oppression going on there. Then we can minimize the effects, but I don't think, unfortunately, that that could counterweight the propaganda effect uh, of the championship within the country. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ugla, uh, for this intervention also. Uh, and uh, we will proceed uh, immediately to my colleague, Mr. Mikalski, please. Thank you very much for your invitation, Mr. Lockegaard, Mr. Schmidt. Um, I fully agree with last speaker, fully, with everything, with everything. Uh, if you are asking uh, about who will benefit from this cap, the answer is clear, Mr. Lukashenko. Not the uh, Belarusian society, but the regime of Mr. Lukashenko. Uh, if you are asking uh, about uh, who, uh, who misuse this uh, opportunity, of course it will be Mr. Lukashenko. Uh, there are not, not we who mix politics and sport. This is Mr. Lukashenko who was the first one who, 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 who tried to, 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 to mix uh, politics and, and sport. So our, uh, our uh, response as a European community should be clear uh, to stop this uh, idea to organize uh, this championship in the country where are political prisoners who are tortured, uh, who are tortured, uh, who are killed, uh, I have problems. Uh, I, I, I agree, partly agree with, with Mr. Szczesny, but, but I have problems with, uh, with Olympic Games, or I had problems with Olympic Games in China. And I will have problems with Olymp Olympic Games in Sochi, Russia. Because uh, there are countries uh, 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 which, which, which kill their citizens uh, uh, because of political political motivated uh, reasons. So this is the same uh, situation in Belarus. Um, and this championship will legitimize this regime. Of course we are, uh, uh, Madame Struzinska said that uh, we shouldn't treat uh, Belarusians as someone worse. Uh, of course we know that uh, you are well educated, that you are you Europeans that you are part of uh, European culture. And this is not the, the point. We are not discussing about Belarusians. Uh, we are discussing about this regime, this last or one of, uh, of two uh, uh, last regimes in, uh, in Europe. And this is the reason why uh, American uh, uh, parliament, one European parliament, one uh, the NGOs, uh, were such actively in, in last uh, months. Uh, uh, I would like to, to, to show you some very short presentation about uh, those activities. Uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, the European Parliament uh, uh, adapted two resolutions uh, about this, uh, uh, this issue. This is one uh, from the March of 2012. Uh, and the second one, uh, it's not such strong, but, uh, but this, this, uh, this issue was, was mentioned. So this is what the uh, what European Parliament uh, uh, did for, for this, uh, uh, for this uh, um, issue. Uh, this is the last initiative. Uh, th it was the idea of Mr. Lockegaard uh, that coordinators of uh, Culture and Education Committee sent the letter uh, uh, about, uh, about uh, this thing. And I think that uh, we as... Um, as European politicians, uh, we did our work. Okay, I don't know what we should to do more. Uh, uh, we adapted, we work with words. We adapted uh, strong resolutions. We sent letters, Mr. Szczesny mentioned about uh, his activities. And we as politicians, we did our work. We should know that um, the IIF, uh, HHF, this is independent, uh, independent uh, organization. This is some kind of NGO. So this is delicate issue 
that we as a politician shouldn't push, shouldn't, uh, uh, shouldn't influence this independent uh, organization. But, but this is our duty, not only like a people who lived in communist countries, because I have the same, uh, the same experience like Mr. Szczasny. I lived in uh, communist uh, uh, Poland. Uh, but I think that uh, it was the, the, the work of politicians. But what is uh, important, that there, are, uh, uh, there, there is a lot of, uh, of, of uh, activities made by NGOs, by, by activists, and I would like to show you some of them. I think that the first one is, is uh, um, it was, it was uh, started by, by Mr. Szczasny, uh, by m Madame uh, Irina Bogdanova, sister of one of, of activists, uh, 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 and, and, and me. And we collected uh, several thousand uh, signatures uh, uh, about this. The, the second one, uh, uh, this is Polish campaign. It, it, was, it was made by me, but it's very similar uh, to, to this, uh, uh, this activist. Uh, activist. Uh, this let, let, let dictator on the ice, uh, something like that. And uh, we collected several uh, signatures. We sent this, those, those signatures. And this is the, uh, the, the good example uh, to uh, how to, uh, to, to, to push uh, uh, authorities or, or, or uh, people in, uh, in uh, IIHF to change their, uh, their decision. Uh, don't play with dictator. This this is the last uh, the last initiative. Uh, I think that yeah, uh, it it was made by uh, by by Libereco uh, and another German, Switzerland, Norway, Czech Republic, and, uh, Czechs and Slovakia uh, NGOs. Um, and this is this is the the last one. Uh, uh, no to sponsoring. So we 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 sent. Uh, 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 letters to sponsors, Skoda, Raiffeisen, uh, because they are, uh, uh, they are sponsors of, 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 this, uh, of this event, and they should, they should uh, uh, um, send uh, influ uh, influence uh, uh, the, the, this organization, independent in the, uh, organization, to change their, uh, their mind. And uh, as, a, as a last uh, picture, I would like to, to show you uh, one, um, I think two, or, or uh, sh uh, should you stop it? Uh, I would like to, to, to show you one of, uh, of activities. This is a, a little bit controversial. I, I hope that there are not children uh, in this room, but I would like to, to show you how people can, uh, uh, can, 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 can uh, act uh, uh, in, in this topic, please. This is this kind of activity uh, which can influence uh, the people who will decide, because it is not true that th this decision was made. Uh, I was in Helsinki with, with, with uh, uh, Belarusian NGOs, and we met with uh, vice chair of, uh, of this organization, of IIHLF. Uh, but uh, the final decision will be made in, sh in, in Stockholm uh, in one month.
I think at 18 or, or, or 19 of, of, of May. So I think that this is the last chance, last time, uh, the last month to, to cooperate with NGOs, with, uh, with, with European society to, 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 to make, uh, make pressure uh, on this, I, I would like to undermine it, independent uh, uh, um, organization. And this is, w w w this is my message that we as uh, politicians, maybe we, we did our, our job, our, our work, but maybe this is the, the last time for, for NGOs uh, I, I sent to Polish Minister uh, of Sport, uh, Polish, uh, Polish, uh, Polish uh, section of, of, of Ice Hockey Federation. So maybe this is the, 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 the best solution to cooperate with, with ordinary people, with NGOs, with, with organization, to, 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 to make pressure uh, on, uh, on, on um, International Ice Hockey Federation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, colleague Migalski. Um, I think that now we come to a point where we actually need just a few remarks from, uh, I guess it's uh, <laughs> most of the, of the, 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 uh, the questions were, were for you, Ms. Stusinskaya, but, uh, but so I will, I will uh, let you start. And then hopefully, if any other uh, one here in the, in the audience would, would like to, to raise questions, I will take them uh, uh, after that. So I'll open up the, for, the, for the debate right now. Please, Olga. Thank you very much. Just a few comments as a reflection of what was said by other participants. Uh, I would like to start with this video, uh, where at the end it says no to Minsk 2014. And I come from Minsk. And honestly, I'm not sure uh, whether this is a good message to pass to Belarusians. And again, I don't speak about the government of Belarus, but I speak about the people of Belarus. Maybe it should be no to human rights violations or no to something else, but no to Minsk and two millions of citizens of Minsk. And connected to this, um, Mr. Chasny and Mr. Migalski said that we are not discussing here Belarusians, but we are discussing the regime. I think this is what the international community should do, the reverse. It should discuss the society. And it should talk to Belarusians and about Belarusians, but not continuously talk about Lukashenko and the regime, which we know what it is. It will probably not change. And I think it's what we would appreciate as the society of Belarus, exactly more attention to, to, to our issues, to what, to what the, the society wants. And Mr. Chesney also said that the regime is not okay. And exactly, yeah, we know the regime is not okay. But also, since I always like to rely on data, uh, what the Belarusian population uh, think about how to change uh, the <coughs> political regime in the country. The population is not prepared to go to the streets and openly to, uh, to uh, express protest. And the degree of fear to express uh, its dissatisfaction is very high. Instead, the population wants what it's called in the surveys, the gradual reform. And that's again something that one, one could discuss further. And, and efforts are being done with the European Dialogue for Modernization, for example, some other tools, but more of that is needed. Then what Martin was speaking, and I mentioned before, about the unification of messages. And since Mr. Chastney said that it's, it's, the question is about postponement of the championship, then maybe there should be or could have been uh, a united message that we postpone until all political prisoners are released. And that leads then to the last remark I would like to make, uh, or the, not the very last, um, about the good communication strategy which the international community could have if the championship is taking place in Minsk. And I mentioned it before. And final remark on what Martin said about legitimacy. I partly agree with it that it will help the regime to, uh, to gain more legitimacy in the country, but not international. I think internationally there is no, the view on this, uh, on this government cannot be changed. Everyone knows what it is, and uh, I don't think that it will anyhow affect the legitimacy internationally. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, excuse me for just... Uh, uh, a short follow-up question to, to one of the things you, you just stated, because uh, out of, of, of curiosity, you said that, I, and I guess that's the point of, of the disagreement here, uh, you said things are not going to be changed. You said you can't change uh, the regime. 
uh, what I mean that 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 is for me the interesting point in your argument in in, in the way you argue, you argue because why do you think that you can't change things? I think the 18 years have shown it. Uh, I don't think that the the uh, head of this government uh, will. Uh, from all of a sudden change its view on the questions of democracy and human rights. I don't think one should expect it, and that's precisely why I think the focus should not be on him, but it should be on the society. And, and just one more follow-up question. And then you talk about uh, the gradu some kind of, of, of development more gradually. But how can you expect things to move uh, gradually if you don't expect them to change at all? I'm just quoting what was uh, published in the survey. And there were several questions. One was related to going on the street to protest, where overwhelming majority said no. Second was about drastic reforms, with the very low percent saying yes. And the third one was about gradual reforms in the country, and that's what the majority of population uh, agreed with. Thank you very much. One, one one yes. A few short, uh, short replies from you, and then we go to the, uh, to the audience. Yeah. We should be very careful about survey or data from Belarus, because this is dictatorship, and uh, it's questioned who, uh, who, who made those, those data. Because I, I lived in, in Poland I, I, uh, before to, uh, 1989, and I remember that uh, in official data, uh, all Poles uh, su supported uh, uh, the Polish government, Polish communist government. So be careful about this. And the, the last, uh, the, the second uh, comment, of course, uh, Mr. Lukashenko survived uh, uh, 18 uh, years. The, uh, the Soviet Union survived 70 years, and this is the reason why it collapsed. So the, uh, the, there is no uh, proof that uh, the, the proof that it will continue is that they uh, continued the, uh, to this uh, this time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Just want to. to to comment about the legitimacy issue. Now, of course, you won't gain any more le legitimacy outside of Belarus, but that's not uh, the thing. It's not what he's interested in. He's interested in the, uh, <clears throat> the inner legitimacy, the leg legitimacy within uh, Belarus. And his main interest is, as I see it, simply to stay in power. Uh, even the poli holding political prisoners is not a, a, a goal for Lukashenko. It's just a means that he's using right now, he's using it uh, as a, also as a coin or something to negotiate about with, with, with the EU. Uh, what's interesting for Lukashenko is to, to, to simply to stay in power. And then he, he needs this inner legitimacy. Okay, and... Uh, Just a precision, I'm quoting data by independent institution, not by state agencies. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stashny, just a brief. Briefly about those streets and, and this gradual, I like that because that was exactly my thinking when I was living in Czechoslovakia in a communist regime. There is a fear, there is instilled fear in every citizen. That's one of the reasons why that uh, I, I better don't use what I want to use. Uh, the, the, the gentleman, Mr. Lukashenko, still keeps KGB. Even Russian changed that because that's equivalent to Gestapo. Uh, because the, the history and legacy. And he doesn't because, because it serves a purpose. It keeps the fear, keeps people afraid, uh, not trusting anybody and, and just looking all over the shoulder all the time. And this is something that, that you know, we, we need to do something. And that, that's why I realize that even the championship, by asking for postponement, do something, it makes people think. That's one, 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 of, one part is, is, is Lukashenko thinking, which he can do himself a lot and let the people think. It is their championship. I want to make this clear. It is there. It's Belarusian championship. It's good for hockey. It's for Belarus. But it needs to achieve something. It shouldn't serve to you know, support and strengthen the dictatorship. That would be, that would be uh, a wrong message uh, by, by any measure, and, and hopefully you know, it will be achieved. Look at the Fidel Castro. Even Fidel Castro kind of gave in. We supported Damas in Blancos. You know, and, and eventually, and I actually even financially do it. Eventually, even Pope got involved, everybody got involved, yet boom, they release everybody. We need some kind of a gesture, and, and you don't achieve it by, by 
by praising him and doing everything whatever he wants i mean we need to stand up and people need to understand at least as a, as a as a spectators as a, as an important player in all this picture that you know the, the whole world is talking about Bel belarus there is a reason they want to take away championship from us there is a reason why is that so the question is important and then hopefully at the end there'll be some good results thank you and then the lady over there and uh, i'll take you one by one yes yeah, I have three questions. Uh, the first one is for Miss Stu. Uh, yeah, anyways. Just wanted for you to clarify. You said at the end of your speech that the focus shouldn't be on the regime, but should be on the Belarusian society because the people do, uh, they do want reforms, they do want to get close to the EU. On the other hand, you, on the other hand, you said that 85% of the populations agree that Russia is their best friend. Can you just clarify a little bit whether they do want reform and EU friendly or Russian friendly or somewhere in the middle, please? My second question is for our, our Czech uh, friend there, uh, Stas. Ni? So, Slov Slovak. Sorry, Slovak. 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 Great eyes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I apologize. Um, you said we shouldn't boycott but postpone and in return uh, ask for favors, ask for some changes from Lukashenko. And when he has done that, he could you know, possibly maybe later get the championship. What kind of changes? Can you mention a couple of concrete examples of goodwill signs from Lukashenko that would make you agree with uh, this championship in Belarusia? My last question is for Mr. Schmidt and Mr. Lukagod. Just in general, what is your aim with this? Are you proposing... Uh, are you proposing to go on with this, suggest a boycott? What are your options? And also, also referring to what Stushkinskaya said as well, we had the Eurovision Song Contest in, Song Contest in Azerbaijan. Uh, isn't it too late to start arguing about this championship now? Thanks. Thank you very much for three good questions. I, I urge people not to have more than maybe one or two, but unless we'll, <laughs> we'll have to postpone this also. Well, this gentleman over there, and, and then uh, that's, it will take some more questions. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yes, uh, I think it's a typical case of real politic. And the dilemma is whether to go along the mainstream with the power, money, popularity, or to try to balance and change the situation a bit. And uh, I agree with Petr Stosny very, very much. Uh, you have your experience in this. We, we have two. 33 year, years ago, I in occupied Estonia, Soviet occupied Estonia. We started a boycott against uh, Olympic regatta. Uh, because we sent from our underground letters to participants and try to explain that it would just legitimize the Soviet occupation in a country, uh, occupation of which even the United States and uh, other democratic states did not recognize. But I like this um, uh, um, uh, case, what, uh, what Mr. Ugla brought that uh, Swedish players having relations with prostitutes were suspended. And the question is whether having relations with dictators will be more respectable. Uh, anyway, the traditional uh, claim that sports is, uh, sport is about politics is, is a false one. We all know this. Because it would certainly give a dictator a breathing space, that is, People come to Belarus and find that it's not that bad after all. Uh, uh, it gives opportunity to lead attention aside from the political uh, problems, to have a patriotic unity with dictator, dictator. But on the other hand, we do have a very strong position that is, resolutions by U U U.S. Senate, by the European Parliament. We need, I think, we need to press for it, at least to have a price. Be because uh, otherwise, the dictators will, will have their goals accomplished without major problems. We need to just ask for a price to be paid for these games to, to proceed. 
otherwise they should be postponed. And then I think this dilemma should be presented to Lukashenko with all seriousness. It is up to, of course, to our foreign services and uh, our governments, but, uh, but I think uh, uh, that, that was a good question from my neighbor. What, what will be the conditions for a change? What, what we will be the minimum requirements? But I think it's, it's also important because next year there'll be Sochi, the next year, well, yeah, Sochi Games. Also, a very, very important moral and political challenge, because if Olympic Committee would have agreed to Sochi Games before the Soviet invasion against Georgia, I think they, they would have made another decision. Thank you very much uh, for this statement. I think we will uh, we'll, we'll come back uh, immediately to you, but I think before forgetting what I actually been asked, we will go back to the panel for, for, for one round of quick answers, and then we get back to, to the rest of the, the, the questionnaires. So uh, I think it was you, Olga, if you can start. Thank you. The question on Russia as a friend and the EU. It's actually indeed very interesting, because if you ask people about which country is the most friendly to us, 87% say Russia. I think simply because of the lack of communication of why the relations with the EU are what they are. Of course, internally people don't know. And as I said before, they pursue the EU policy completely different from it is. Uh, at the same time, if you ask where you would like to live in Russia or in the EU, about 60% will say in the EU, even if many of them have not even been there. Which that, that is very interesting. And I would uh, also, if you allow me, uh, would like to comment on this um, suspension of the Swedish players. And that's something related to values and to understanding of values. Because I think if the same would happen it in is Belarus... It is illegal, however. In Sweden, it's illegal to buy sex. So it's not morals. It's actually breaking the law. I think I would just have to but point that out. But it's also a conviction of rape, actually. Hmm. Okay. It just... Uh, I can imagine if similar, something similar would happen in Belarus, most people would not understand why these players are, are suspended. Sadly so, but it goes simply back to the question of understanding of the basic values, which is, I have no doubt, very different in our society than in the EU. And that leads to the question that the EU has always talked to Belarus, to its government, from the position of values, which are completely not understood by these people. about the postponement and, and uh, uh, basically it, it comes and that, that's it's in the law in the United States it's here it was in our in our uh, uh, resolutions it's the it comes from the NGOs it doesn't come from my head and uh, but my clear vision is you can do one clear deed release all political prisoners everybody and then second is promise promise of the reform gave the more voice to the NGO, liberalize media, uh, make sure the uh, society is more plural. And, and, and you know, that would be more than enough. It could be done almost immediately, immediately. That's the, that's the side from the, uh, Lukashenko. On the other hand, I want to make sure if I can say something very, very briefly. What happened, uh, Belarus was awarded world championship, but that, this, that was way before December 19, 2010. So there was a way for IHF to back up. Hold on, we gave it to you, and, and it looked like right now it's a mistake because the whole democratic world is telling us it's a mistake. So please postpone it or, or, or do something, or we no, do something, or we would have to postpone it. Uh, satisfy the democratic world and, and NGOs so we can, uh, you know, we can really leave it as it is for 2014. And if not, we can postpone it. And there were so many postponements in the history of ice hockey. And it is no problem. Hockey is not Olympics. It's not that complicated. You can postpone a year or two, exchange with somebody, and wait till something happens. So IHF can really save you know, their skin because they did good faith decision. Then something happened. And if something happened, it's not up to them. It's not to look at It's the whole world is raising the voice, and it's being uh, you know, really disturbed by what happened. And as I said, did, and then some promise would do. 
Thank you. And then uh, I guess it was a question for Ola and me. Will we start? Well, I, let me just uh, to, to, to what can be done. Uh, it's a very good question since uh, my, my colleague, Mr. Migalski, already said that, uh, and I think rightly so, that, that we only have a very few uh, uh, few tools in our back. Uh, but I, when I started to, to go into this matter, I w we were in the midst of, of, the, of, of uh, the boycott discussion uh, concerning y the Ukraine uh, issue last year. And I think that, uh, of course, we one can have different views on this, but 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 uh, I think that this campaign was actually quite successful, and we we, we were divided also in Denmark and uh, in, 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 in our parliament, uh, <coughs> even in, in within the parties on on what to do because what did uh, what did we achieve by uh, by boycotting or uh, try to boycott uh, or threaten to boycott uh, the Ukraine? Uh, I think we actually achieved a lot. We achieved a lot of uh, attention all around the world, and we. Uh, so, so uh, to answer your question, I guess that uh, if we can, if we can continue to pressure, that will uh, and do whatever we we, we want to do, and, and and find, you know, working with NGOs, uh, making events, making uh, videos, whatever. Uh, at at some point. And that's my personal opinion. At some point, you will actually have the attention also of the big leaders. And that was exactly what happened in the Ukraine question. We got all the European leaders suddenly changing their minds and backing this project. And suddenly, we got the attention of the, of, of the Ukraine government. But it's, it's, it's a tricky question, and, and, and we were also at that point divided. And we will, uh, we will also be in this, in this question, I guess. Ole? Well, I, I think we have to have um, different strategies. Uh, of course, since 2011, after actually to December 2010, we wanted to, to boycott. I, I, we made that statement uh, early last year as well, and it has been reiterated today. But of course, if, if this game is going anyway to take place in, 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 in Belarus, uh, we need another sort of strategy. But until the Congress have met in Stockholm, uh, of course we have to put the pressure on, on, on Mr. Englund and Fazer and all the other guys that they need to do something. And we will have some meetings in Stockholm as well, trying to convince them. And, and um, because I think that the main issue for me at least is that um, Lukashenko himself is misusing sports. That's, that's my main reason. And, and that's, that's why I'm uh, actually trying to, to to postpone it or boycott it, whatever. But if the game is there, then of course we have these conditions. And they are, they are you can say they are simple, but they are of course um, a, a dramatic change for the Belarusian society. If, if Lukashenko will uh, admit to this, I, I, that would be extraordinary. Then of course he can more or less uh, leave his seat. But, but, but if this is not happening, uh, hopefully it will. Then, of course, we can have the discussion concerning, what should we call it? Uh, you said sing for democracy, perhaps hockey for democracy? I don't know. But of course, if, and I talked to Mr. Englund about this. Could you, if you are going there, he's the chair in the Swedish Hockey Party, could you made a, make a statement? Could you make a public statement? Or could you get your hockey players to do something, some sort of manifestation? Uh, he, well, he was not that eager to do that, but, but he didn't uh, object it totally, but he was, of course, not very eager to do that. But that's the ne next step, because now until uh, the decision is not finally made and we can postpone it, or whatever we call it, uh, we will continue. We will continue uh, uh, until May, and then we will take another strategy, of course. Thank you, Ola. And now back to the uh, questions. I think we have to move on now. I, you'll get a, you'll get the chance after this. This lady and the, here and there. Take three. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm working with the European External Action Service. I'm one of the two desks on Belarus. Um, thank you for this opportunity to discuss this topic. On the film we saw, I cannot uh, but I cannot resist and say we were, I'm waiting for the opportunity one day to see this kind of movies with the other sex involved, maybe with some nice male hockey players. Would be a nice change uh, for, for once. <laughs> well, um, 
I'm, I don't like to be a pessimist, but I think that on this question of the ice hockey games, I will be a pessimist. I think the train has left the station and that it will be uh, almost impossible to get the International Ice Hockey Federation to change its mind. Um, we had the Olympics in China. Um, I disagree with the assessment that in China there were some signs, positive signs or positive results as after having organized the Olympics there, uh, China remains, if we only just take the death penalty, the worst uh, case all over the world and that has not changed. So we've had the soccer championships in Ukraine. Um, Yulia Timoshenko was in prison while a couple hundred meters from there uh, the, po the games were ongoing. So um, if we've had the Olympics in China and the soccer championships in Ukraine, uh, what can we put forward as an argument to not have the ice hockey championships in Belarus? And I'm not saying that I don't agree with the arguments, but what I'm saying is that if we want to be coherent in our response, um, and follow also these laws in Canada and the United States, which I was not aware about, uh, but, uh, about, but then we need to be coherent and actually boycott the Belarus championships. Otherwise, we're not being coherent. Um, I think that we will probably need to prepare for a situation where the ice hockey championships will be taking place in Belarus and where we have to use different activities like campaigns or working together with the actually with the actual international uh, not the international the national ice hockey federations and see how they can be um, taken on board and, and help in putting the message across because as you said they will be shaking mr lukashenko's ha hands they will be posing uh, with him and can we use the ice hockey players themselves uh, to pass messages across. This was also done in South Africa, for example, uh, with the messages against racism. So how can we involve the actual ice hockey players who, um, whom Mr. Lukashenko will have to listen to if he is coherent with his own position? Um, finally, um, I do think that Mr. Lukashenko is looking for international recognition. Uh, dictators uh, want to save face. He needs to save face. It's. Uh, sometimes surprising, but yes, even dictators need to say face. And he is reaching out uh, to other countries, sometimes not the right ones, sometimes they're Venezuela uh, or Singapore, uh, but um, it is certain that he is craving international recognition and attention. That is what we observe. Thank you. Concerning the film, I totally agree. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, let's continue. This gentleman. Thank you very much. My name is Alexander Bielefeld. I'm working for uh, Bursen Marsteller for the EMEA sports practice. Uh, however, I do not have a client represented here. I think that's uh, that's important to say. Um, but out of a personal interest, maybe a question to to Mr. Lockegar or to any other person on the on the panel who wants to answer. Um, I personally, when, when we look at what is happening at EU level and also beyond, we see that obviously the International Ice Hockey Federation and the Ice Hockey World Championship is not the only mega sports event which actually comes under certain questions with regard to where it's hosted and how it's hosted. Um, Mr. Lockergaard uh, mentioned the, the decision or the European Championship last year in Ukraine in the case of Timoshenko. We had the f last uh, recent FIFA reward uh, of the World Cup to Qatar, which also comes under serious questions. So we see a certain pattern here. And um, at EU level, in the last year, I would say, in the Commission, but also in the, in the Council, we discussed so-called EU guidelines on dual career of players. We uh, discussed EU guidelines on good governance principles for sports um, organizations, such as board representation, transparency, disclosure of information, um, democratic minimum standards. So in how far would it be a practical step also for the parliament to consider guidelines for hosting sport mega events, especially because sport mega events do not touch only principles of democracy, but also of environmental sustainability, um, quite a range of legacy issues. So um, maybe for someone to answer this question. Thank you. And the lady down there. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alena Zuykov. I'm also from Belarus, representing the International Consortium Euro Belarus here. Uh, I don't have questions, but rather some comments. Because um, um, uh, as we see, there are some different positions regarding this uh, 
ice hockey championship in Belarus, and there is no ideal solution. So I welcome the, Euro, the European and international decision makers to be uh, pragmatic and to balance what uh, does uh, the EU lose and win in case of such and that decision. So let's imagine the, that the decision is taken to boycott uh, the championship in Belarus. For sure, it will uh, punish the dictator and uh, nobody has tried to evaluate how much does it cost the infrastructure, what is currently built in Minsk, but I imagine it's uh, quite expensive. Still, um, Lukashenko will do all his best to not lose his image within the country. So people who support him in Belarus will still support him and the boycott will never improve the image of the EU in the, Belarus, in the Belarusian society. So in case um, if uh, the decision is to boycott, um, the deep and developed cooperation with Belarusian society has to be developed. Media campaign, cooperation with NGOs and all, all possible stakeholders who can influence the society and to explain why it's boycott because of political prisoners, because of human rights violations, because otherwise the society will not accept and will accuse the EU of um, losing this championship in their country. In case of, um, in, let's imagine that all political prisoners are released, but there is no a uh, chance that after the championship, the political prisoners will not be again in the country. So what I could imagine, that um, the EU should strengthen its uh, offer. So I'm not telling about, for example, EU membership. It's, it's crazy to talking about that now, but so for the moment, the political prisoners are still in the country, in prisons, so the European offer is not, um, so the carrot is not big enough. <laughs> so the EU should think to strengthen its offer, so not just, so to try to uh, find the kind of guarantee that then, that uh, to, to seduce the government, the Belarusian government, not to make new political prisoners. And um, third possibility I'm thinking about um, is that uh, these, to use the championship for the EU, Europeans, politicians to come and to campaign, to come to the country and to campaign. But, so let's think about possible risks. So, for example, I know uh, Swedish representatives come to Belarus and they are very critical in the country. So now they are talking about that Swedish embassy will be back to Minsk. So it can be easily expelled again. So this risk has been taken into account and, to, and the EU should try to manage the risks. What, that's my message. Thank you. Thank you very much for that intervention. Also, I think we have a very good range of, uh, of opinions here um, and, and some good, very good uh, questions raised. Uh, do we have any more people wanting to ask questions because we are about to finish after the last round here. Uh, I'm looking around. It's, it's, it seems to we have covered the, the, the whole range here. So I will go back to the panel now for for closing remarks for everyone. Everyone, so we'll take a round. As certain questions have been raised, so if you can uh, sort of uh, deal with both the questions and your final remarks uh, in one, I think that will be preferable. So let's start with uh, with you, Martin. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, there was some talk about Azerbaijan and China and Qatar and, and Belarus and what's the difference between them. I wasn't too fond of, of awarding China the Olympics and I also don't see any progress after the, the Olympics. Uh, perhaps that could be, could notice still a difference in Belarus, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's so uh, clearly a political project, a governmental project. That's, that's at least one factor that uh, perhaps could, uh, we could have in mind. Um, someone asked, was, isn't it too late to start the campaign right now? Uh, and I just want to remark that it didn't start right now. Uh, our organization started the protest already in 2009 when the uh, championship was awarded Belarus in the first place. The application was presented by the then Minister of Interior Vladimir Naumov, who was at the time uh, in the EU list 
of sanctions against people who are violating human rights in Belarus. He's suspected of, of uh, involvement in the disappearance of oppositionals. So it already then it was, uh, I would say, a scandal. Uh, but it's also a lesson to learn because that, was, that decision was taken in a period when EU tried to trust Lukashenko and tried to have a dialogue uh, and believe in some kind of liberalization. Um, as for conditions, well, the release of political prisoners is, of course, crucial, but there must be changes on the systematic level as well. Otherwise, we will have the situation repeated again, of course. They will be taking new political prisoners. Uh, so, so if we are going to put conditions to, to the regime, there should be conditions about the freedom of assembly, the freedom of uh, association, the freedom of expression, about the election without uh, rigging. So we, we have to, to change uh, on the system, systematic level, otherwise we won't achieve anything, I guess. And finally, I would just say that I think it's a long-term challenge for, for, for the sports community to adopt some kind of guiding principles uh, in the sphere of ethics. Uh, I think, and that w perhaps it's, it's a challenge for all of us to, to try to, to influence the sports community in the respective countries and to avoid the situation where, where such regimes are awarded uh, these championships or Olympic Games. Thank you very much. And then Mr. Migalski. Um, the decision about uh, mm, this championship uh, will be uh, will be taken uh, in one month. Until this time, we should fight to, for re relocate or postpone this, uh, this, the, the, this cap. Uh, but of course, if uh, IIHF uh, decide to, to keep their decision, uh, we should be prepared for, for the next steps. So to use, uh, uh, to use this championship to promote human rights, to promote uh, uh, the opposition, to promote freedom and democracy, to, uh, um, to, 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 to raise the question about political prisoners, of course. And I think it will be good opportunity to remember about all of these things. And uh, uh, finally, I think that Mr. Lukashenko will be not, uh, not, not, not satisfied with uh, organizing this championship in, in Belarus, because it will be an uh, opportunity to, 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 for, for, for thousands of fans uh, of uh, high so hockey to go into the uh, Belarus and to, to promote uh, European values. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anolka? Thank you. Um, one issue we didn't touch upon, but I still would like to mention, which is a se separate discussion, but nevertheless, the leverage that the EU has on the situation in the country and the leverage that eastern neighbor of Belarus has on, on the situation in the country. And I think whatever is discussed in Belarus, one has to always keep this in mind. Um, despite the difference of opinions here, I think this discussion was very useful uh, to simply discuss different ideas and strategies that can be adopted in uh, be the decision A or decision B, whether the championship takes place or not. And we as the Office for Democratic Belarus here in Brussels, we remain available to all interested parties if there will be a campaign organized to, to serve as a bridge to, to get connected with the local NGOs and other actors in the country. And I would like to thank the organizers once again. It was my pleasure uh, to be here today. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Stasny? Thank you. I, I will make the three comments. Uh, the, the one, one point was that boycott. That's why you, you heard me. I, I really spent a lot of time with it. And boycott should be like, a, as I said, like declaring the war. Totally last option should be there. But that's why the postponement, it's better. Because boycott, it's too sharp, too divisive. And, and it brings sometimes more radicalism. And, and, and it doesn't help the cause. It doesn't help the, the, the Ukraine. doesn't help the people. doesn't help the fans. doesn't help the sport. The only one who benefit uh, often is, is the dictatorship that actually was holding, was aimed against him and against the whole regime. 
Uh, the other thing is maybe maybe a tree is a, or third uh, kind of a strike is a charm. I, I mentioned in my uh, early uh, introducing uh, speech that first time they didn't even put it on the agenda. Second time they put it on the agenda, but just just breeze through it. You know they never let anybody chance, <coughs> nobody chance to speak or. But as I said, it's important to at least bring it to the vote. I mean, democracy shouldn't be insulted. There is, you know, representative of, of almost a billion people actually got a clear resolution. And as I said, uh, in the United States, it's, it's the law. Uh, so they deserve, it deserves at least a vote. Because as I said, the atmosphere is almost like among, uh, among Belarusian population. That's a similar atmosphere in IHF. They all alone, they all afraid, they all happy, they got good position, and nobody wants to jeopardize it. In Belarus, the population is different. They all afraid. You know, KGB is there, ever omnipresence. Uh, so we need to do something only, and, and, and you know, I, my hope is, uh, you know, because I try, and, but I see them. I got the inside information mostly from US and Canadian delegates. Uh, but we need to, because we EU, we need to convince somebody who would stand up once the point comes, get it to the agenda again, and somebody to stand up and, and, and raise briefly what's at stake. Because people don't know. And once you say it clearly, and then demand the vote. Once people know and there is a vote, you just don't know how they will vote. And, and you know, if we, we can accomplish this this time around, because it's, ne it's never too late. I agree with the you know, lady from commission, because, you know, Mostly, you're right. It's, it, the chances are smaller than before because the momentum is not there. We need to create a momentum, and, and somehow we can still achieve something. So IHF does not act like ostrich. You know, like a, something happened and they stuck head in the sand, and, and they try to kind of wait it out till you know championship happens. Somebody needs to stand up and, and let them know during this congress that will be in Stockholm and demand the vote. And we can do it through, through the representatives. As I said, my hope is some of the Nordic representatives, either Finns or Swedes, or, because mine, it won't do it. I, I know these people, they control, they still, the previous communists control everything. It's almost impossible. Then I love another point, that that's uh, you know, some, some kind of EU guidelines. Because that would be, uh, you know, like, you can put the guidelines, we, we, we notice the, the evolution, the, the, the racism. Now we have, you know, those heavy, heavy penalties. You, if you say something, you know, and it has nothing to do with the sport. You didn't injure anybody. You didn't insult anybody. It is insult. It, not, it, but in the past, it wasn't. Now you've got people, group people of fans chanting, and, and you know, club pays and hundreds of thousands, and, and they, they, they lose revenue of millions because they they not allowed to play, let's say, at home, there is stiff, stiff penalties. And, 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 and this is not less. I mean, this is not less if, uh, if, uh, if we allowed, we, we allow as a, as, as a society to, to support directly or indirectly some kind of dictatorship. If there is some kind of strong breach and we have it in the guidelines, so I would exactly say the trigger for these guidelines because it's not easy to interpret them. A trigger would be the strong resolution. And once there is a resolution, you put the pressure because there is another, another catch. You know, this institution, it works in the, in the vacuum. It's, 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 it's very difficult. It's outside of a jurisdiction. It's supranational. Uh, it's away from jurisdictions and, and it's difficult to, to kind of understand it. So people don't stick the nose into it. It's, it's, and, and they know it. And that's why they act the way they act. But once there is that pressure from outside, once there is clear guideline and there is a trigger point, then we can put the pressure on ministers. Ministers will put the pressure on these chairmen or president of the federation, and they need to act because if not, they'll be out. Next election, they won't be there. And, and you know, that's the only way we can do it, and it would work, it would work perfectly because I, I don't think any parliament or, or senate would insanely, you know, vote something out of, uh, you, know, you know, these are the representative of the people, and they can serve as they as they did, as, as a trigger point to to let these guidelines, uh, you know, take their course, and then you have the member state, you have you can put the, you know, we can put the official pressure on ministers. We tried last year 
through ministers of you know whoever controls the sport in different ministry usually there is no minister of sport but there is culture uh, education and sport or you know it depends on the country but to to really uh, you know give them the ammunition these guidelines would really help and then they have to act because otherwise they would be uh, breaching the law of, of of European Union and uh, and that would be that's some kind of a good idea that we can look at in the future thank you Thank you very much. Uh, before leaving, uh, the last words uh, to my colleague uh, Olli Schmidt for some kind of summing up. Uh, I'd like to answer the questions raised for, for me, uh, and, a, and, a, and a comment also to the lady from the, from the, uh, from the external service. Uh, you first. I think I totally disagree with you. I totally disagree with you, and I, I tell you why. Uh, I've only been in politics for sort of four or five years now after being a, a journalist for 25 years. And at some, at maybe I haven't learned that much, but I have learned one thing, that in politics, everything can be done. Everything can be done at any given moment. So it's never, ever too late. I, we always hear from the bureaucracy that everything is too late. You can never do anything. And that's exactly what, what's at stake here also. These two opinions, these two uh, way of looking at things, uh, but politics is totally rational, totally rational. So these guys, of course they can be influenced. Of course they can make a new decision. It's all a matter of pressure. So we just have to decide whether, what kind of pressure we want and if we can get the big guys on board. Because the big guys can make the pressure and then certainly things can swing. That's my, uh, my personal impression, that's my personal experience. Well, <coughs> turning to you and your, uh, your, your, your very good question about uh, the things going on. I think we are in the midst of a paradigm shift. I think that what we are actually uh, looking at right now is a movement from the idea that polit politics and sports would never ever be mixed and should never be mixed to a whole new regime where the political level all around the world uh, realizes that we simply need to do something. Sports is too important to leave for, for, for the sporting organizations because they are many of them, not very uh, skilled and not very pre well prepared for the 21st century. We have all kinds of issues, cross-border issues, uh, all kinds of globalized issues, also sports events. So of course we need guidelines. And many things are, are, are on the move right now. I just came from a conference in, here in Brussels uh, two weeks ago where, where the, uh, the international sports organizations, uh, some of them were gathered in order to find new ways of, of, of good governance because they had received the signals from the political system. They all know that the, the ground is burning. Uh, the IOC, for instance, the lady from the IOC, she was under immense pressure in this conference to do something. And that's basically because the journalistic environment and the political environment are making the pressure right now. <coughs> so I will foresee that in the five to, five to 10 years, we will have guidelines for sporting events around the world, because this is a part of a big tendency. So, Ole, up to you. I think that was a very good concluding remark. <laughs> you have to be positive. Uh, I, I would like to thank everyone coming here, uh, and, and, and the panel, and, and, and the rest of you, and all those that actually have been involved organizing this from our different offices. Uh, I think it has been a fruitful discussion, and, and uh, you could always say, uh, what kind of weapons do we have? Uh, it's only words. Well, sometimes it actually matters. And, and um, uh, my conclusion here is that we should never give in. This is our obligation. Even if uh, Martin and me, we have been raised in a democratic way, uh, perhaps our obligations to react uh, uh, towards uh, dictatorships is even more, uh, we are even carrying more responsibility for living in, 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 in freedom in, in all our youth. I think this is, is actually one of the core issues. So how do, how do we go now on? Perhaps we could um, uh, send a letter to those guys that are voting in, in Stockholm and put some extra pressure on them saying that actually it should be up for voting. That could be uh, actually one option. Uh, and, and the second one is perhaps to, to give some conditions uh, and, and, and mention the, the postponing of, of, of 
the game, and also try to be publicly uh, active. Uh, if we are not successful, hopefully we, we can be successful, then I think we ought to meet again and try to figure out what we can do. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's 2014, a lot can happen, but if the, in, in the end we actually see that the games will take place, of course we have to react. Perhaps we even should go there, some of us, you never know, and try to act in, 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 in a more uh, actually concrete way. Anyway, uh, I think we should, um, uh, we should try to keep up the pace. Uh, I hope we can agree with that. I think I, I, I just read the, um, the statement from Madam Ashton here uh, a couple of weeks ago, so I think we are uh, all in line in this. This is just how we uh, react in, in, in different concrete measures. But anyway, thank you for coming, and uh, we will keep in touch. We will try to actually formulate some sort of message from this meeting and go on further perhaps to the Hockey Federation in, in, in May. And I hope we can all agree on, on this. That's, this is not over, Luka, Mr. Lukashenko. This is not over. And <laughs> if the Hockey Federation is still doing this, shame upon you. Thank you. <laughs>